guy who does not suck and is the opposite of terrible, and that is my man, Coach Derek Stingley Sr. Coach Sting, what's happening, man? Morning, guys. How you guys doing? Uh, well, I'm doing great, uh, Jake's. I'm still doing good. I'm just not doing great, okay? <laughs> He's in a mixed bag, I guess, yeah. today. Uh, Sorry to hear that. <laughs> hey, okay, so a little, a, little, a little Mardi Gras Tuesday, Coach. What does a normal Mardi Gras look like for Derek Stingley Sr.? Um, I'm from Chicago. I rarely celebrate Mardi Gras. <laughs> oh wow! So when did so how long how long how many years have you been in Louisiana for then? Well, I've, I've been down here. You might as well say I'm, I'm a Louisiana, however you want to call it. I've been down here since '94, but I've only been to Mardi Gras down in New Orleans once. Wow! And that was 2009 or 10. I'm not that type of guy. I don't like parties. I, I don't like crowds. I hate people to be all up on me. My kids, they enjoy it. My family, naturally, they love it because they're part of it. But for me, I'm just, I've always been like, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll watch you guys go down to those parades. I'll stay in the car or, or I'll drop y'all off. <laughs> okay, so, so being from Chicago, like this weather, like you're probably laughing at everyone driving yeah. slow, <laughs> staying inside, not leaving. The roads are just clear of everything. There's no people on the road. You're like, wait a minute, this is like a Tuesday in Chicago. Yeah, this is a normal day, but I do understand the fact that South Louisiana, they're not prepared for things like this. At least in Chicago, we have salt trucks, we have, you know, all that. And they, they put all those people to work, you know, very fast. As soon as they get the forecast down here, it's almost like they really can't do that. So they got to let Mother Nature take its course <laughs> where the sun has to come out yeah. or the temperature got to heat back up. So I get it, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but, you know, we're not closing schools and all the stores are not closing now because of oh, ice. Sting, <laughs> when I was in San Diego, it would sprinkle like once a year and the whole place would shut down. Like exactly. people would stay off the yeah. interstate because of a sprinkle. It's so wet. I, I, I laugh about it. Like when we had the little snowstorms a few years back, I was like, this is this is not even average compared yeah. to what I grew up in. <laughs> Talking to Coach Derek Stingley, senior here on OTB, uh, Coach. So it is it, it is spring football time. Um, LSU is firmly planted in the off season training regimen right now. Something that these young old linemen, right, who are maybe whose, whose shape left a bit to be desired last year, didn't get to do last year. Now the entire team is getting ready for fourth quarter drills. Uh, how's that preparation been going? How's it been going for Derek Junior uh, in particular? You know, naturally, this is like his what third, fourth quarter because yeah. he 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 went in early. You know, after he um, signed with him, and for him, it's like it's business as usual. But he did tell me last week he was like, "Oh man, Dad, we got fourth quarter coming up." So <laughs> it was like his voice went like that. So so you know that Mafi really puts it on him, and and, and for the new guys who never experienced it. It's something to experience. Now it's it's, it's going to make you. It's going to make or break you. You know you're gonna you, you're gonna find out that you know this is what college football is all about. You know when when you were boasting about all your all your offers and all the scholarships you got and you can't wait to get to college and then now you have this grueling of a off season conditioning. This is tough. This is the tough part. This is this is why you come to play football right now. <laughs> I know one of the things that I appreciated watching in that 2019 season was, uh, you know, Sting and Jamar going after each other and Terrace, and they would have great battles. And that was, and Christian Fulton as well. I mean, you had good receivers going against really good defensive backs. I kind of can see that happening again this year, right? Because you're starting to bring in some of these receivers. Some of them played really well last year. You've got a lot of young talent, five receivers coming in this class. So I've got to imagine Sting uh, Jr. is looking forward to welcome those guys to college football oh, without a doubt you 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 look at that room over there that receivers room and man it's like you you got some some great talent over there young talent some talent that already been in the room um then you look over at the corner position you know now we, we know that jay ward is a baller you know cordell flight is, is coming to his own eli is who he is and thing so yeah it, it's going to be those battles again and, and i'm pretty sure all the new coaches can't wait to see it as well because they heard about it. They, they they heard about what went down with with Sting and Chase. But now you got a new crop. You got a new group, and and it's probably gonna be the same type battles. And you know, hopefully, I can get over there and see a few, so I can see what's good. But I'm I'm pretty sure each group gonna be up for the challenge, though. 
Well, and, and Coach, I know we've kind of touched on this question a few times throughout the last few weeks, but uh, we'll just revisit it since this is all ongoing. Um, but, I mean, you look at that secondary, and I've talked about it plenty. Inheriting corners that are named Eli Ricks and Derek Seeley Jr. is unlike anything that any coach could dream of walking into, and yet here they are. Uh, what has the continuing relationship been like with Coach Jones as they're getting more time on task, a little football school here and there? Uh, I know we talked about how Coach Jones had called Derek. You know, that is something that his previous D coordinators had never done. How's that relationship continuing to evolve? It, it's getting better. It's getting better about a, about a week, so about a week to go by. And and the one thing that Derek told me, he was like, you know, doing football school, they were all out there and they were um, working on some schemes and they was doing some team stuff. And, and he said it was so loud from the defense standpoint. And what he meant by that was everybody was – yelling out their checks or their responsibilities. You had the, the linebackers, you had the safeties, the corners. And Derek was like, man, I never heard it like this before. Ooh. And he was lined up over, over Kayshawn, and Kayshawn was like, man, y'all really over there talking now. It's like, I hadn't even heard this. So he was like, this is what a defense is supposed to sound like. So Derek, was, he was hyped up about that. So, you know, that that's the good thing about, you know, what's going on with the new coaching staff and, and with Coach Jones. He, he's bringing that energy. He's bringing that that ability for those guys to communicate better, to make things a little easier for them. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. You know, as the days and weeks go by, I, I could tell the relationships are getting stronger and stronger. That communication is so important, and, and we've talked about it before. I mean, last year, you just, you know, you didn't have it. And then, you know, one guy would, would go in motion or he'd shift, and then you saw a lot of guys trying to point to figure out exactly who was covering him so that communication as you well know it has to take place like it has to be something that not only you do in the moment but you prepare to do that knowing okay whatever they do we can fix it with our communication exactly because i mean if you don't if you don't jacob you, you already know it's that's the first down or touchdown yeah. i mean they, they all have to be on the same page you can't have and especially on the back end if those guys are just off, if one guy's doing something different than the other guys, it looks like a cluster of mess, and and you don't want that. And and we had some of that over the over the course of the season last year, and hopefully that's that's gone, that's beyond us. And those guys can play fast and they can play smart. Uh, a cluster mess. Uh, excellent <laughs> euphemism there, yeah. Coach. You thought I was going to say it. <laughs> I also, I've, I've heard cluster cuss in the past, which is pretty good as well. Uh, shout out Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love that movie. But, okay, so so y'all, y'all stumbled. I, I was like, right before we got on, I had a question I wanted to ask you. I lost it, and y'all just recovered it. I, I want to talk to you about the value of a safety on the back end, especially like a pass coverage safety, because it's something that we're going to explore with the Saints later. The Saints have to decide if they want to pay Marcus Williams or not. Uh, He's been really, really good. But the thing about his impact is it's not always felt, right? They almost suffer from a bit of O-lineman disease where if a safety's doing his job and taking away the deep ball, you never see it because the deep ball never gets thrown, right? So, like, Mm -hmm. what is the value to the cornerback, to the team as a whole, of 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 having those pass coverage safeties and having them able to uh, to basically put a top on the offense. Well, look at today's football team. Uh, it's it's all five wides most of the time, and if you don't have an athletic safety or a safety that's communicating well enough with those corners, you know you you're gonna have all type of big plays thrown on you, and you you need someone who can cover as well in some man coverage. Because if, you, if you're going to try to send some pressure, one of those guys has to come down on those slot guys and cover some of those speedy slot guys. and Or, or if not, they got to stay over the top and play their responsibility. And then at the same time, you also got to play the run. So you need athletic safeties who can, who can do it all. But most importantly, got the communication skills down packed to the point where there's not that many busted coverage. So, in my opinion, safeties are the most important guys on the defense side of the ball wow. in today's football because of how much passing is thrown. Damn. Well, I mean, there you go, dude. Looks like the Saints need to pay Marcus Williams. Based off of that, <laughs> uh, Coach Derek Stingley, senior, Dunham defensive backs coach, uh, joins us every single Tuesday, gives you incredible insight into everything LSU defensive side of the ball. Coach, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy this Mardi Gras that actually sounds like it's just a regular Mardi Gras for you. Oh, yeah, it's a regular Tuesday <laughs> for me. Just say, <laughs> yeah, Hell you yeah. guys do the same, man. <laughs> All right, Coach, take it easy. Uh, okay, when we get back, 
We got a little OTB mailbag coming up for you. Uh, T Bob, Jacob, Musso, and Danny hanging out. Um, I don't have the internet anymore. Is y'all's internet working? Uh, uh, yeah, because I can still see my accounts hacked. Okay, so, yeah. excellent, excellent. Uh, my internet is not Musso, so can you tell me what live I'm about to do? Wow, uh, what a horrible time to ask that question. Okay, well, let's go to break and we'll do mailbag when we get back. Off the ball. 